Okay, so in this video um, we want to look at determining the rule for a graph of an exponential or a logarithmic function. Um, previous video was here's the rule, sketch the graph. Now we have here's the graph or information about the graph, find the rule. Okay, so we'll just work through a series of examples here. So the first one we want to find, um, sorry, we have um, that the rule for this function that we can see pictured here is of this form. So we can see it's a log with a base 3. So you're not going to be able to determine that from the graph. You're going to have to have some information about the sort of form of the equation when it's a log or an exponential. Um, and we want to find the values of a and b. So b is going to come from the fact that we can see where the asymptote is and that tells us about the translation. Okay, so we can see that there's been a translation um, 3 to the right, which means that b is going to have to be 3. We want x plus 3, the graph is, no sorry, b has to be negative 3. x plus negative 3, so that is x minus 3. So that's b, so make sure we answer the question. The question isn't to find the rule, the question is to find the values of a and b, so we've got b. Okay, so that implies that the equation is y equals a times log base 3 of x minus 3 and then we have a point that we can use to find a. Okay, So we're going to sub the point 6, 4 which is when x equals 6, y equals 4 and so that is 4 equals a times log base 3 of 3 and remember from our earlier log videos log base 3 of 3 is just 1 and so therefore a equals 4. So we've found the values of a and b. We could then write out the equation as being 4 times log base 3 of x minus 3. Um, but just making sure that you answer the question. If the question asks for the rule, make sure you summarise everything back in the rule. If the question asks for a and b, make sure you have clearly said that a equals something and b equals something. Okay, example 2. Find the values of a and k such that the graph of y equals a e to the kx passes through the points 1, 5 and 3, 20. Okay, so we've got two points and two unknowns, so we're going to sub our two points in. So when we sub 1, 5 in, y equals 5 when x equals 1, so that's going to be a e to the k. And the second point is 3, 20, so y is 20 when x is 3k, uh, sorry, x is 3, so we get 20 equals a e to the 3k. Okay, now you can, we've got two simultaneous equations to solve simultaneously. You can use substitution, rearrange one of these to make a the subject, which is pretty easy. So for example, this would mean that a is 5 over e to the k, or 5 e to the negative k, however you want to write it, and then subbing that in here, perfectly fine. Um, we can actually also use elimination, and we can use elimination not by adding or subtracting the two equations, but by dividing the two equations. So if we were to do equation 2 divided by equation 1, we're going to get 20 divided by 5, equals a e to the 3k divided by a e to the k and the a's cancel out so we eliminate a um, so 20 divided by 5 is 4 and e to the 3k divided by e to the k index laws say we subtract the powers and so that's e to the 2k so regardless of how you do it you're going to get to this point um, and then we can solve this by converting to a log equation so 2k is equal to log base e of 4 and so k is going to be half times log base e of 4 and you can stop there but it's not really very nicely simplified because we can take that half and stick it up into the power and in this instance that's a good thing to do because 4 to the power of a half is the square root of 4 and so we have log e of 2 for k. So we found the value of k um, and then we also need to find a. So I'm now going to, I'm going to substitute k into equation 1 and I'm going to have 5 equals a e to the log e of 2. Now, this is important. I find this is something that students forget. We have talked about this. Remember that exponentials and logarithms are inverse functions. So in the same way that if you have 2, I'm oh, sorry, if you have 2 and you add 5 to it and then you take away 5, these are inverse functions. They're undoing each other and you still have 2. If you have 2 and you multiply it by 3 and then you divide it by 3, these are inverse functions. They're cancelling each other out and we still have 2. If we have 2 and we square it and then we square root it, actually let's do that the other way around. If we square it and then square root it and then square it, um, we still have 2 because the square and the square root are inverse functions. Similarly, if we take the number 2 and we put it in the power of an exponent and then we put that in a log with the same base, they cancel each other out and we still just have 2. 
okay? We don't cancel them like that, but they undo each other. Um, and similarly, the other way around, if we have an exponential with a base and a log with the same base in the power, then the exponential with the base of E and the log with the base of E are undoing each other and we still have 2. So this is A times 2 and so A is 5 on 2. Now the question says find the values of A and K. So K equals that and A equals that. Alright, example 3, I think it's the final one. Find the values of A and B such that the graph of y equals a times log e of x plus b passes through the points 5, 0 and 8, 1. So again, let's sub two points in. So subbing in the point 5, 0 when x equals 5, y equals 0. 0 equals a times log e of 5 plus b. And subbing in the point, we'll call that equation 1 maybe. Actually no, let's we can actually solve this for b because of the 0. So we're actually not going to have simultaneous equations because we can use this information to find B um, and then we can find A after that. So dividing both sides by A means that A is going to disappear. And then we can change from a log to an exponential. So e to the power of 0 equals 5 plus B. So that's 1 equals 5 plus B. And subtracting 5 from both sides, B is negative 4. Okay, so we found the value of B. And then we can sub our other point in. So now we know that our equation is y equals a times log e of x minus 4. And now we can sub our other point in, which is 8, 1, and use that to find a. So y is 1 when x is 8. a times log e of 4. And so a equals, sorry, 1 divided by log e of 4. It's perfectly fine to leave that answer as that and I probably would but if you want to think about that sort of change of base idea 1 is log e of e over log e of 4 and if we have the same base here this is actually the same as log base 4 of e so if you prefer to write a equals log base 4 of e rather than it be 1 over log base e of 4 um, then that's perfectly okay too but you don't certainly don't need to do that. Okay, so exercise um, 5F, sorry there was an error in your notes there, it accidentally listed the work for the next section twice. Um, so exercise 5F and you're doing all questions in exercise 5F. It's correct in the summary sheet at the front of your booklet, it's just not correct in this particular place here.